and welcome to this honkcast.com presentation brought to you by the Good Luck Have Fun crew. My name is Sunspan, joining me as always Xenocide. This is an AP apparently because they had to remake, but this is game two of the CSN Play Heroes Home Points Cup number two finals. Easy versus Port. Easy one first game in convincing fashion with the Mage Bane carry just raping face, just raping people, bending them over, having his way with them. That was Chu, who's now playing Emerald Warden. But again, this is AP because they had to remake. How's it going, Xenocide? How's it going? I feel like you've managed to match the speed of your voice with the speed of all the great picks going on because it is AP. Unfortunately, we don't get to see the, the bands either, which is a little bit unfortunate because that actually the picks and bands, sadly or maybe not sadly enough, I don't know. They're one of my favorite parts of each and every game. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes you have teams that just like ban generic heroes and it's not very exciting and then they pick terrible lineups that worked like two months ago but other times you get to see creative bands that actually fit exactly into what they're trying to do or bands like specifically made for the other team and it's always an interesting thing to puzzle out but unfortunately we don't get to see any of that uh, oh, my question is how do they fail at bp so often like well, these competitive I mean, things teams. happen as you no. all know with your crashing computer you know no no, no no that's not it though i guarantee you 99 percent of the time it's just people can't decide in time and I think they should be punished. They should have to well, play those crappy heroes. For a reason. Exactly. So I would agree with that. That's but ridiculous. Again, there is no network issues. There is plenty of other issues that could be the reason too. But to quickly run down the lineups, we do have a four a Han portal, Dark Lady, Corrupted Disciple, man, going a little bit of carry heavy there. And oh my God, I don't even know what hero that is. I'm gonna okay. actually have to look. Oh no, it's the, other, it's the alternate behemoth. Oh, uh, God. Little face. He's just like glaring at me. <laughs> who did you think it was? He's like, how did you not know who I am? Are you serious? What is wrong with you? Yeah, what is Empath wrong with you? and Jeraziah. On the other hand, we do have Emerald Warden, Death Metal, or Heavy Metal Rhapsody, excuse me, El Galete, and along with Pharaoh and Demented Shaman. I want to see the new Pharaoh. What the horse is this? That's not acceptable. They have all these alt avatars, and they don't have the one I haven't seen yet. I mean, come on. Ridiculous. That is uh, a little unfortunate. By the way, B Kid, B -Kid, B -Kid playing Rhapsody. We'll see how this goes. He, I can seriously not remember him playing anything but Behemoth and Magnus ever. <laughs> I mean, he's really well, good with them. Don't get me wrong. Now let's sync on time here because my computer sucks apparently. Uh, and anytime it like three, loads or pauses. Four, five. All right, that's close enough. That's All good. right. So uh, now that we've hopefully gone through, hopefully that's our only competitive pause of the. Uh, the game so we can stay relatively on sync right now we do have a tri lane set up here actually this is definitely a very very aggressive uh, tri lane here for easy playing gauntlet ds and then uh rhapsody here so that'll be an interesting thing to basically see what happens on the other hand we do see that portal is running dark lady and empath in mid something a little bit similar to what we saw you know easy do with Mage Vane and Glacius there, so they're looking to get Dark Lady a lot of farm and have him basically play the same role that that you did in Game One. Yeah, and I'm more interested in this Jeraziah Pharaoh matchup. I, I love seeing Jeraziah in a solo lane because, as we all know, he's pretty solo dependent or not solo dependent, but level dependent if you want to build him right, depending on how he's going to be done. But it looks like Demented Shaman is going to help out Emerald Ward, so they they actually give up on the tri lane right away and end up evening out. So it's a two, it's a one two two overall. So Corrupt Disciple, Behemoth versus this Rhapsody and Gauntlet. It's still going to be a somewhat aggressive lane, I would think, for Gauntlet at least, because I mean, you can't not play him aggressive, I don't think. But again, it all comes down to you know how this middle lane is going to go. Last time we saw Easy doing the same thing, like you were saying, and Mage Bane got Easy farm, a lot of kills. But this time it's two on two. We'll see if fares better for for uh, Port this time. Yeah, and, you know, Dark Lady, I think, is uh, one of those heroes I'm a little bit surprised that you don't see her slightly more often. I mean, there has been this shift away from melee agility carries, uh, with, the, you know, a couple exceptions, obviously. Mage Man we still see semi-frequently. Um, but Dark Lady did get some nice tweaks last uh, month, or just about a month ago anyways, uh, changing some cooldowns and stuff like that, and she is a hero where you can get farm on her, even in a lane where you have a, a disadvantage, so it's not a, a hero that you always need to dominate the lane with to you know, at least get some decent farm. Right, and not that she's amazing in a death lane, but she can survive a death lane with not only her charge ability to let her escape for escape ability, but like you said, Taint Soul is amazing for last inning creeps, which you don't see nearly as often, so also a little bit surprised that you don't really 
see her as I mean the only thing with her is there's only like one build <laughs> well one initial build at least you have to get rune cleaver on her just because it works so well with her skills there's basically no other choice and for that fact alone that's why I'm not a big fan of her because I like being more flexible as Rhapsody's taking quite a bit of damage from the corrupted conduit tid corrupted disciple and I mean it looks like talking of aggressive just port sides being a little bit more aggressive than I guess that's because Rhapsody can't really heal to that degree. I'm just kind of surprised that Demented Shaman didn't stay and Rhapsody go mid, to be perfectly yeah, honest. Yeah, that would have been, I think, a better matchup, but... You know, I, I'm i a little bit surprised, as you said, to see that as well. Rhapsody would be okay in middle, uh, using that Staccato to shut down a whole bunch of auto-attack damage at the very least. As we see in mid, a little bit of harassment damage being put on the Dark Lady, forcing her back in an Empath, having to fall back. But does it use uh -oh. the... Uh, oh, boy! Oh, there's the uh, first kill as Yoda ends up going down. I got distracted trying to think of a spell name, of course. And Dementia Shaman ends up dying for his... Test me. Up Which spell there. name are you talking about? The Life Leech for Empath. Is that what it's called? Essence Link is what it's called. Oh, we're not calling it that ever. Ever. Yeah, I don't know. I life, just leech. Life, drain. <laughs> life Leech. Life Leech, Life But anyways, uh, it'll be curious to basically see how easy he plays this. Yeah, I'm... Uh, Assuming that Nymphora was banned in this game, you see a great uh, gauntlet hook there uh, pushing Rhapsody over the fissure there from Behemoth. So, He's done that uh, a couple good times play by now. him. But, you know, gauntlet's a hero that I always really liked pairing up with a hero like Nymphora. Uh, again, he does a lot of burst damage and can be really good in ganks. So, uh, either way, it'll be a hero that'll allow them to be aggressive in this game if he can get some farm and maybe get a fast blink dagger or just get So, what's a blink dagger? I've too. never heard that name before. I, the portal key. You so, really suck at that. I'm not going to lie. I, do. I should just call it a PK because I use PK a lot. Yeah. But, you know, I think overall this is a game where the rules are reversed. You want to see, you know, they don't really have a great pushing team, does easy, but they have a very aggressive team with Pharaoh, with Gauntlet, with a couple of heals, and Emerald Warden being able to output a decent amount of burst damage, you know, relatively quickly into this game. I think they're going to look to be very aggressive in, in their ganks and their aggressive wards. And on the other hand, with a port, they're going to basically going to look back and be like, "Okay, Dark Lady, we'll see if you can uh, carry us to a win here in game two and go to the." Decisive it's like game the three. tables have completely turned from game one; just completely switched sides here. Behemoth is going to well, it doesn't even need. Oh, a nice gauntlet, but it's not going to be it's enough close. to get away. Will die in the end too. I believe Rhapsody's. Oh, that's Rhapsody on his team, so that doesn't make any sense. Unfortunately, the, the emo Rhapsody just just gets me. You know. She really so, throws you off. I it, think it's it does. You're, you're too attracted, and you just can't admit it. You're like, ah, I wish. I've never been into emo chicks, I don't think. Yeah, you say that now. <laughs> I say that now, all right. Give it a couple years. Uh, going over some creep, uh, creep kills here. 30 creep kills on Jared's eyes, so he's doing excellent. I mean, if you're talking about 50, he's basically on pace for 60 at the 10-minute mark, which is excellent, excellent. And Fair, on the other hand, only 21 and 3, so not doing nearly as well. Isn't that much of a surprise considering Jerozai has so much survivability and can really counter <laughs> Pharaoh as he, Pharaoh's going to use Wrath of Pharaoh for no reason there. Maybe to get a creep kill, I don't know. Uh, but Jerozai does have that early ring of sorcery, so going to be able to spam that crap anytime he wants. And yeah, this is it's so weird that if, hopefully people watch game one because it's exactly the opposite. It's, Emerald Warden is getting all these runes and she's going to bot up this invis and perhaps yeah, and go bottom top Yeah, bottom is actually going to go down to Crafted Disciple. An interesting play, I think. I think Semi-G made a little bit of a mistake there and uh, ended up pulling a Rhapsody into the fire as well. Um, Tries to pop the health pot, but does go down. That's a double kill for Corrupted Disciple being played by Chubby Chris, number two. Uh, hmm. He's 3-0, and oh, six minutes into the game. Oh, as we have action in mid as well, and Demented Shaman goes down again. That's two kills that they got on Yoda playing that Demented Shaman in middle. So right now, I mean, 5-0 and oh, in favor of the team that has two pretty decent late game heroes yeah. so uh just like game one wasn't really looking too great you know at least in game one port managed to put some pressure on early at this point they're pushing that second tier rat or not racks uh tower at bottom and you know doing a lot of damage getting some gold for their team and amun ra at the very least was looking like he was farming very well this game on the other hand easy doesn't really have uh, anything to hang their hat on at this point because they're they're just not really winning the lane yeah, I guess you can argue at top Korok playing that Pharaoh is doing a decent job holding his own, taking a look at the creep score there. 26 and 4 versus 4. Ooh. Wow. 
Have you heard that? That is great, Par. I, I've wow. been talking about that forever. Yeah, I just ignore you as usual. So yeah. I'm, I'm a little. For some reason, I thought you were saying the other way around, but. Wow, Jeraziah farming great. At Oof. bottom, we do have more action as Chubby Chris finally goes down as CD. Now 3-1, and one. so good job by them at least picking someone off there. But yeah, they're basically losing every line. <laughs> That's a nice way to say it. But yeah, a Corrupted Disciple, we haven't really talked about this being somewhat of a... I wouldn't call it... There's different kind of counters, right? There's a hard counter, there's soft counters. I'd say he's a soft counter to a Pharaoh where he can just run corrupted conduit as long as he wants and that was actually funny because i feel like pharaoh might need to get a although he can easily get out of his own mummies but it would be funny to see <laughs> pharaoh get a tablet of command to get out of his own mummies for that fact alone because corrupted conduit being placed on him taking all his damage while in the mummies is pretty much it's a pretty big counter in some instances and again it really just depends on how you initiate and who you can initiate on but you don't want to initiate on a corrupt disciple in that scenario, obviously. We're going to yeah, see some counter warding action here. Yeah, Gauntlet had to go back and heal. Rhapsody did a good job keeping him alive using the staccato to prevent CD from uh, getting any kind of crazy nuke off or anything like that. Poor, poor Yoda. He's just having a rough game at it. Probably will end up getting that ward countered in the long run here. And, uh, you know, again, you kind of go back to that original switch where they moved DS to mid as. Wow, that does so much burst damage from Emerald Worm, and now they're going to try and counterattack, but Darkly's going to have to fall back, take a lot of damage, missed ultimate oh. from Pharaoh. That was a huge miss there. Could have maybe gotten that <laughs> kill on Darkly, but meanwhile, Jezai comes and throws down the heal onto the Dark Lady, and going to be fine there. So that was a great opportunity for them to maybe get a pick off on that hard carry. Unfortunately, Pharaoh just barely missed that ultimate. Look at the gold per minute right now. It's lopsided. And it's a lopsided pyramid in favor of Port right now. I mean, Jerazai, by far, the top farm of the game. They're very close behind his Corrupt Disciple. By far, the second highest farm of the game. Then behind that is Dark Lady's going to initiate onto Semi Jew in mid. But, wow, nice. He's really I, having some nice. Uh, he's having some nice grapples. grapples. But at, on, on the other hand, They're he's having some nice grapples escaping after getting yeah. absolutely destroyed. So, Gauntlet's a hero. Of course, you want to see him play very aggressively, go around and get ganks. And instead, he's just like, oh, God, get me out of here. What is going on? And you see him running back to base for like the third time in the last three minutes. So, he's not having a great game. And if he's not having a great game, he's kind of the one chance they had of having a nice ganking hero that can go around and. You know, put some pressure onto both CD, who will get tanky eventually, and Dark Lady, who you know is still, you know, not necessarily the highest as far as uh, health pool does go, only at 796 health right now. So uh, that's a hero that's of course susceptible to a gank from a hero like Gauntlet, as we have Empath is getting destroyed again. And that's kind of the <laughs> one thing that they have done well. You know, Emerald Warden throwing out a lot of damage early and being able to pick off that Empath really before she's able to cast almost anything. Yeah, well, what are you going to do? I mean, we see another Wrath of Pharaoh, kind of unneeded, but didn't hit it anyway, so it doesn't matter at the end of the day. Emerald Warden just dies instantly in a thin mist of blood as we like to see from time to time but yeah you know uh, Korak hasn't necessarily had the best uh, accuracy percentage on that at ultimate from Pharaoh so far this game for one reason or another so uh, I'm sure he's just, he just wants to hit something other than a creep at well this the point. funny thing is I now that I'm looking at the picks here a little bit more closely as Dark Lady is going to get pounded into the ground my <laughs> god uh, I guarantee you Port banned Nymphora because I feel like an Amphora Gauntlet would have been huge, but instead they have to go with a little bit of a different lineup here. I haven't really yeah. seen Easy play uh, Emerald Warden too much as Empath's taking a lot. Nice protective charm on top of Empath, going to keep her alive. There's the Empath all going to keep everybody else alive for the time being, but and that's going to cost her her life in the end there. As Chase is going to continue on from Jerazai, who does not... Oh, he does have a level into Righteous Orcs. Hey, so slow a little bit. aggression from Gauntlet. There we go. There so he's going to finally get a kill on somebody. Now Empath's like, oh no, run away! Unfortunately, Pharaoh doesn't have any mana to follow it up, so she should be fine unless she sticks around with that Gauntlet sticking nearby. Does use the Health Pot, but again, Gauntlet and... I mean, I'm not too surprised to see Demented because of the survivability, but... The Nymphora would have been a huge, huge, huge pick, and I'm sure, like I said, Easy. I have. Have you seen Easy pick up Emerald Warden ever? Uh, like it's Emerald usually a Warden Southeast a hero, Asian I thing. I think you know Reason has picked uh, picked right. up Emerald Warden a couple times. Other than that, not so much. I can't recall ever seeing. Yeah, I, I couldn't tell you, but uh, not that I can remember. 
and oh, dusk bin. Any any team that lives in the Pacific Rim slash or yes, AKA love Southeast reward. Asian, yeah, they're big time Emerald War. And then Reason is the one anomaly in the rest of the world, I guess. But yeah, it's interesting it's, to see her. Yeah, it, it's an interesting pickup. Um, and this is the second game in a row where I have seen Emerald Warden picked up, and it, you know, I think Emerald Warden is a better pick against Mage Bane than it is against Dark Lady, although Dark Lady has kind of that same escapability spell, uh, so maybe that's kind of what they were thinking. Uh, still just a little bit strange. As a Miss Grapple goes onto this Corrupted Disciple, he's going to try and pull back Poppy Nilt. There's Initiation from Pharaoh, going to do a lot of damage, and he will go down. A good gank by them. Picking off Chubby Chris. God, I love that name. Down at bottom lane once again, so he was having a nice little time farming there, and I think they're like, oh, yeah, we've 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 left a corrupted disciple down the bottom lane for like the last three minutes. So uh, let's go, let's go whenever, say hi. Whenever you say chubby Chris, I think of a penis. Is that wrong? Um, are you turned on or no? Then yeah, a little wrong. Oh. Anyways, we do have Empath like jump into Dark Lady. We're gonna see if Dark Lady can manage to get past the oh, zombies. Bouncy, Doesn't bouncy. To get the charging strikes in one last auto attack, but can't get it off. And Pharaoh's gonna get away. Oh no! What? He missed the ultimate from Behemoth. Maybe trying to get the kill onto that Pharaoh's gonna make a run for it back to base. There's a heal coming in onto the Dark Lady, who also throws on Protective Charm. Dark Lady's gonna go back in, doing a lot of damage, chasing down this Rhapsody, who probably will be fine actually. Although another charging strike, so we'll see if they manage to catch up. There's another great. Great heal from Jerezaya. Looking at Jerezaya's, well, oh, slow is only a level one. That's a little surprising, given how slow everyone's running around him. But lots more action here. Demented Shaman is probably going to end up falling, and does. While well, meanwhile, you do have Emerald Warden getting killed by, and that Jerezaya is just playing very well this entire game. 62 and 17, three and one. Looking at his gold for it's 323. So, yeah. good job there by uh, Relo. Yeah, big shout out to you for a uh, strong Jirazai game so far. I'm gonna look at his stash, see what he's got here. Oh, I brought up the shop. I pulled a breaky. Let's see. Okay, he has nothing. I don't know how he doesn't have anything right now. We're gonna have initiation mid. Dark Lady is gonna get away because of all the survivability from Jirazai, but unfortunately for Jirazai, it might not be enough. He's gonna spot Soul's Blessing, but there's a Wrath of Pharaoh and the Mummies. I would think it should be enough eventually. Oh my god, why do I do this and to myself? Wrong as god! Know. God! Kill like me. Three seconds. Really? You're horribly, horribly behind again. But that's okay, because now you're not horribly behind. God! And, uh... I need a new computer. <laughs> oh, uh... dear. So, I mean, this is kind of the same point where we were in the last game, where it's like, basically, Port has a very high Ooh. chance of winning this game. Very and... health on Corrupted there. Yeah, you do need to find some way, I guess, if you're easy to... Just say, all right, we need to make some sort of risky move at this point. Things aren't going well. If we keep Buy a Doombringer, for example. Yeah, that's a quality move. <laughs> they have to farm that, of course, which uh, isn't really going too well for them either. You know, I, I guess I just wonder with their lineup. I mean, you do have Gauntlet, who can kind of take off. Uh, Dark Lady's going to get sperma stun here at tier yeah. 1 and insta-give by Gauntlet. Jesus yeah, at least Louise. with Gauntlet now, you can really just see the amount of burst damage that he can do. Now putting a little bit of pressure onto this empath. You know, he's a hero over at least in this game. He can Are you kidding me? Aggressive. And we're uh, really very uh, exciting stuff here. Oh How's it going, Suns fan? I don't want to talk about it anymore. I just don't. It, it's gotten to that point. Yes, I feel, I it's seriously so feel like Reeves. It's... A really degrading experience for me. My computer is just failing. And like I, I was saying like before that, karma. To be honest, like after all that crap you give Reeves for his computer, <laughs> this is uh, yeah, this I thing's guess. coming back to bite you a little bit. Hey, I'm the one that convinced you to get a new computer, so you should be happy about that at least. That and I, I was I was true. telling you this before the break that I remember Breaky crashing all the time when he clicked on the bananas, and little does he know that I was the reason the bananas are in the game. So in, in in retrospect, it's kind of my fault. He crashed over and over for literally a month until they fixed it. Took the time to fix that. It looks like Jerezai might be running into a little Gauntlet Pharaoh action here in the jungle. Gauntlet's going to bash him a little bit, but Gauntlet gets really low all to begin with. And there's the wall from Emerald Warden. That is going to be a dead Gauntlet one way or another. He's going to try to grapple away, but instead he's going to basically blink Empath to the other side of the jungle. And yeah. Is your mic working? And okay. Yeah. Because it wasn't Listen, working. Listen, I, I just let you sure. have the, uh, the stage here. All right. So, all right, back to the actual game at hand. It's kind of hard to go from you just 
having your computer <laughs> explode like right back into the game here. Yeah. For those of you that did join us and wondered what the heck is going on, this not this isn't this isn't tech support 101 or anything like that. We aren't casting. This no, this is officially terrible. turned into a casual cast. I'm sorry. Terrible. Like, uh, you you can't you can't pull it out of the fire. Is that, is that what's going on? Yeah, it's pretty much it's, it's a done All deal. All right. Well, yeah. So we've obviously had some technical difficulties. This is the CSN finals between Easy and Port Game Two, and uh, things have gotten a little casual. I've unbuttoned my uh, my shirt. I've buttons. lost some weight, so I don't really need to unbutton my pants anymore feels kind of nice that's good yeah hopefully uh you lost like the 18 pounds that were hanging off your chest. <laughs> pretty much true actually that's pretty much what happened i still have a slight double chew oh and the shape of battle he's gonna miss his wrath of fairy yet again he's gonna mummy corrupt disciple who is again gonna use that corrupted conduit on him and gain a ton of damage pharaoh's gonna die eventually i would think rhapsody keeping everybody alive rhapsody gonna die in the end for that pharaoh's still alive somehow but unfortunately for emerald warren gonna get raped that's right, I emphasized rape by Mr. Yeah, and Mrs. That was Dark Lady. Yeah, a great Lady. ultimate by Rhapsody, oh my but God. it really just not going to help them off. Oh! As the essence like, goes on to Pharaoh, goes down to uh, Dark Lady, actually, in the end, and now going to continue putting the pressure on. Oh! There's a grapple coming in from Semi-Jew, but he's, yeah, he's just putting out a little bit of effort before the, the inevitable there, and that's a genocide 19 minutes into the game for Han Portal. And just like we saw in game one with EZ basically dominating the game with, with a team where you might not expect them to dominate the early game with right. that kind of matchup, uh, I think you're seeing the exact same thing out of uh, Port this game. Yep, and pretty much the exact same situation where EZ just has to go all in at this point. Like You're saying they need to take more risks, and it's actually funny we don't see more Doombringers because that is the ultimate comeback item. And I think we've seen it all too many times, especially in games of you know our amazing level of play that we have thrown because other people buy Doombringers and such things. But you can't well, always... You can't always that and you there's know, basically nobody on that team that can really utilize the Doombringer all that well. And it's only 19 minutes into the game, or almost 20 minutes. But oh, either Warden. way, I, I think that's true you know i think the one hope that easy has is that you don't have you, know, you don't have a dark the lady one that's hope. Tanky, and he doesn't have a shrunken head or anything like that he doesn't have any health he's still like 948 hp so if they manage to maybe get some aggressive ganks off maybe get lucky uh, and pick off Dark Lady a couple times. You know, even then, they're still in a little bit of trouble. You know, CD is farming very well. He's actually the top farmer in the game, yeah. battling it out with Jeroziah. So, I I'm a little bit at a loss as to what they can do. But you know, they they might as well give it a try and just see what happens. As it looks like, instead they're just going to look to trade towers here. Bottom tower going down for them as they look to push mid. We'll see if any TPs come in or they just keep going. So we have a blink dagger I'm on sorry, the Mammoth now. A portal key on Behemoth. The worst. And uh, that's going to be great for them in these team fights too. There's the man. Rune so they're going to do a ton of AOE damage between the charging strikes and that Rune Cleaver for Dark Lady and Behemoth having a blink dagger. Now this just is sorry, not what? looking good. A what? For a portal key. <laughs> that is uncanny. How that is? Po I don't know how that's even possible. Can I blame it on Han Portal? They used up all the portals I have in my vocabulary. <laughs> I, I guess so. Uh, something else. Uh, I'll take it for now. But all right. If it happens again, it's not acceptable. As Ember Lord's going to initiate him by a dark lady. He's going to just pound into her flesh there. Oh, the wall and that's not close enough. And Emerald Warden is going to try to get away. Gaywin's going to pound the face of Dark Lady. And he's gonna, she's going to put down a little trap, but Dark Lady is going to avoid it. And but Emerald is going to TP away. So should be good. Is good to go. And I don't know. I don't know what else to say other than they need to do something now. 20 minute ruined cleaver isn't exactly the earliest. I was kind of surprised that Dark Lady got it so late, but I guess it's based on the fact that she has died three times. Might have something to do with it. Yeah, and, you know, I guess if you're Samaju, you at least got some ganks onto the Dark Lady. Did get a couple of kills, but, um, you know, she's not farming amazingly well, only just pretty amazingly well and that's really all you got out of it and you know i i think you're gonna start to see han portal be a little bit more aggressive maybe try and set up some team fights with that behemoth ultimate and the portal key and maybe just try and finish this game now uh, and bring it on to a game three so they really just played very well um they had 
three lanes that they really dominated at the beginning of the game, and nothing really slowed down for them after that. So they really had control of this game from the very beginning. Emerald Warden working on a Nullfire at the moment, and she's going to run into an invisible behemoth who's going to block her in with a nice fissure, and there's a Corrupt Conduit placed onto Emerald Warden, and ooh, Dark Lady's actually going to get the finishing hit on her. Oh, another Miss Feral! Just barely. Yeah, but that was, I think, might have been the range factor. That yeah, hot? that was a little bit of range. It looked like it was on. there from Korok. He, it, I mean, at some point, it's just like, man, like, just give me, like, a sympathy hit on this thing. Like, oh, I think heck? now he's saying, God, just give me a hero that I usually rape with. Like, just give me a... Also true. Give me anybody, a ganker. Anything. Although, I guess Pharaoh is kind of a ganker. There's initiation from Gauntlet onto Emerald or Empath, Emerald Warden, whatever. They're all chicks. They're all the same, right? As, wow. A lot of damage coming out from Dark Lady. But there's the Rhapsody. all going to keep everybody alive for just a tad. Gauntlet's going to run away. The Corrupted Conduit being placed yet again on Pharaoh. But Pharaoh's going to use the Mummy Walls to actually block people off. But I don't think it's going to be enough. As, well, Corrupted Disciple just wants to farm a little bit, apparently, instead of getting the kill on Corrupted Disciple. Looks like Dark Lady's going to get the double kill instead. So great job getting the creep kill and getting Dark Lady the double kill. So it ends up working out in the end. Should be able to get this tier 2 tower, I do believe. And yeah, another one fight for minutes port. into the game, having a, well, this will seem to be like an 18k gold advantage, 13k in experience. That is about as close to an insurmountable lead as you can get in these kind of games. So really not looking too great for easy. Um, and, you know, I, I would imagine at some point they're going to be looking to maybe move on to game three. So, uh, speaking for, for, like, hips. for uh, adjustments maybe going into the next game. We'll just say in So you're calling this. That I will call it. I, I'm not afraid of jinxing anything or uh, calling things too soon. I'm curious to see, because you, you did have an interesting dichotomy here where you had, you know, Chu and uh, I think it's Korok actually playing that Glacius there in middle, uh, doing the 2-2-1 the two, two, with a hard carry in mid. And second game, you basically had the same thing come out from uh, Han Portal. Mid. So are you going to see that same thing in game three where people switch it around and EZ goes back to... Uh, Is this a rhetorical question? A little, little bit, a little yes? bit different lineup. Is this a rhetorical question? No. You can I okay, answer the question? Not, not a non-rhetorical question? Uh, let's see. The answer is no. I don't know what you asked, actually. No, I do know what you asked. I... I think so far, if they're going to lose, that's 0 and 2 for Emerald Warden. So maybe just Emerald Warden doesn't work for anybody but Southeast Asians and Reason Gaming on occasion. So that's that's all I'm going to say. But yeah, I mean, it just all comes down to lanes, really. I mean, this is how both games have gone so far. Lanes have pretty much, if they're going to end up winning this game, that lanes are the reason why. As Emerald Warden's going to jump inside the vagina of Dark Lady, but they're not going to do anything with it. Maybe Kongor? I don't think they really have enough to do Kongor, though. So they're just going to take these Ancients and be happy with that. I don't even think Emerald Warden being inside Dark Lady is necessary for them to win fights at this point either. There's just, there is quite a bit of the lead like you were saying. Well, the other thing is now Dark Lady has picked up an Ice Brand, which gives her, you know, a good chunk of health, almost at 1400 health versus where she was at before, which is, you know, somewhere right around 1000, uh, which will make it a little bit harder for them to maybe get enough burst damage to pick her up before like a protective charm or a heal or something else gets thrown on there. It, it's just not looking good for them, unfortunately. Uh, we also do have, you know, it. I, I, yeah, I want to go over again how awesome Jeraziah has been for most of this game. Uh, doing a great job with the heals with the protective charm, also dominating that lane against Korok as a Pharaoh up there at uh, the top lane early, doing that 1v1 battle. Um, and I really feel like he's consistently played very well throughout this entire game. So a uh, big shout out to uh, Relo there for uh, basically throwing down the Jirazai, not a hero that we see. You know, he's not unheard of in competitive games, but definitely not a, a common, common pick. So uh, always nice to see right. these different heroes played very successfully. Well, Chu's going to be picking up that Nullfire to counter the Protective Charm from Jirazai. He's not quite have enough money yet, though. Uh, not sure what's in his stash. Probably nothing. He needs about 600 more. His behemoth is going to... Wow. Wow, a huge ultimate. Wow, that's three dead out of nowhere. Out of nowhere for easy. And make that four. Last one to live is Emerald Warden, and she just can't do anything. And that's going to be the GGs. They're just... They're calling yeah, I think that was too much. That was a great ultimate, too, from That was behemoth. perfect. Uh, if he wasn't level nine at the time, I <laughs> would have done even more damage than he did go in there on that. Three heroes, then the charging strikes... Man, they just all died. That was a uh... so overall impressive game. From, well, this goes uh, to show that Port does belong in top ten.
Well, yeah, and they've been playing consistently. You know, I think people have always considered them a, a pretty good team, and they really. Yeah, I think they played consistently well over the last uh, month and a half or so. So. Indeed, and with that, that's really going to do it. I mean, looking at the stats, nothing too much to go over. We've basically been talking about this stuff for the last 10 minutes since the game's basically been over yeah, for the most yeah. part. So we're going to go on with game three coming up next. Hopefully I won't crash for the third consecutive time. And yeah, let's, let's cross our fingers. fingers. I Ooh. would recommend maybe restarting your uh, Heroes of New Earth client. I already In did. In between games. In between All right, games. so we will uh, quickly switch over to game three, the decisive game in this best of three for the CSN finals in about a minute or two. Hopefully Sunspan will not fail horribly once again, and uh, we'll see what happens. Stay tuned.